So they've got a mastiff in the house. I guess this didn't work. Maybe that does a better job. standard package unit said they were keeping it set at 75 or 70 and it won't get below 75 they have real bad airflow so it's been off I just turned it on when I got here the blower was running but the thermostat was off and the fan was in auto so check that out but I'm gonna get the charge checked on this thing first because the filter was pretty gnarly which I left it out but it still didn't have good airflow so based on the all the tumbleweeds of animal hair on the floor in the house wondering if that coil back there is not gonna be stopped up when I take this door off but I want to check the charge on it R22. So we'll see how that's working for them. Old pumpkin compressor. Got the rubber lock fittings on it that are rusted all together. At least that one is. suction see what our head pressure is going to be We're 132 on the head pressure 133 right there R22 got it set at R22 last year I looked at was R22 temperature clamps on it. Let's see what kind of keepers we got. Maybe that'll help me know if we've got a stopped up coil or not. That thing right there is ice cold. So I'm expecting a fairly low superheat. Yeah. Got all this opened up, and as you can tell, they're not much on getting maintenance done on anything. <coughs> and they got a bunch of dogs. One of them's a mastiff in there, and a couple of other things. It, the floor is tumbleweeds of hair all over the place in there. It is what it is. But we got three potential problems here. Well, three problems, I'm pretty sure. Number one, I've got Y and G disconnected over there. And the blower's still running. PSC motor. So no air X13, air variable speed, stop running. But we do have the old train time delay relay back there just to clicking away. Hear it humming. So that relay is going to be stuck closed, causing his motor to run all the time. And two of the reasons that we're going to be having an issue with that refrigerant charge and that subcooler superheat. I mean, this thing does have a TXV in it, but subcooling was like three. Superheat was between zero and one. 
because I'm sure once I get this nasty coil cleaned, it's going to reveal how low the charge is. But I'm going to give them their options. It's either going to be replace the relay, which is just going to be recommended. New, new blower relay control. You need to clean this evaporator coil. Now it is a package unit. It's old. What year is this thing? It is a 2007. So it's 18 years old. Probably not worth putting a coil in. If we can get one, it'll be expensive. I can promise you that. This train has gone up on their parts again. I mean, we've got inducer motors now for six and seven, eight year old furnaces. They're costing 400 and some dollars, just our cost when they used to be 200. So it's, it's the nature of the world that we're in now. So it can be expensive fixing these systems. It can be a lot more expensive replacing them based on that same information. But anyway, we are going to do the repairs on it. <clears throat> Maybe we can squeeze another year out of this thing. I don't have any R22 on the truck because I took it off when I put the 454 on it. I had a jug on there. It'd been on there for a little over a year. I probably used one pound on it and I decided I'd go ahead and take it out and put it back in the shop because I hadn't been using it. So I'm hoping that once I get the coil clean, get the relay replaced, that capacitor is also gonna get replaced. It's a 10, it's reading six. So that blower may be running a little slow. That stopped up coil. I'm hoping those two things will resolve our issue with the pressures. If not, we'll have to come back and add that. But uh, <clears throat> anyway. Let's get this coil clean. That's all I'm gonna do first while it's still dry. Oh, look at that. Oh. There you go. Like carpet. Ooh, so I'm gonna get this coil clean. I'm not gonna record the whole thing, but I think you see you get the point. And then we're gonna do the relay and the capacitor. Put it down. Uh, if I don't get a copyright. Oh Lord. I like to listen to music while I'm working. Down. We're going to vacuum all that out in there. But I think this is probably going to be the main culprit of the low superheat. And then you got that mess right there. Train line ports broke off. And this thing doesn't shut off, so I gotta just turn the valve off at the main unit. Alright, so I got this coil cleaned about as good as I'm gonna get it cleaned. I mean, it was mad, it slam up. So, this probably is related to our superheat issue. I'm hoping that when I get the blower capacitor on, the blower ramps up a little more. And maybe we're gonna be okay with the refrigerant charge. And we'll get that relay replaced in the process. Got the capacitor replaced. This is the one that came out of it. It's a 10. It's reading six and a half. So hopefully between that and that coil over there, we're gonna swap the relay out too. But hopefully between those two things, that'll explain my, my pressures and my soap cooling being a little, or my superheat being low, because we had crappy airflow. So I got to get these wire terminals tightened back up. But we'll get that squared away, get this thing back on and see what the result is on those pressures. Alright guys, so we got the coil cleaned, got our capacitor replaced, replaced this, this is the old time delay train relay, they either stick or they don't work anymore, you bump them, they come on, you bump them, they shut off, 
it was buzzing, it was stuck, blower was running with G disconnected and no call from the thermostat. So I replaced it with a 9340 relay. Basically just put a common on the bottom down there, put your G on the bottom, that energizes the relay, it has two switches on it. One passes high voltage to the motor, the other one proves common. That's the difference on these and Goodman's and carriers and things like that. This one proves common over when it closes to this orange wire back to your heat contactor, which is down here in this messy compartment. But uh, that's how train makes sure that the the uh, they want the blower running. If the heat strips are on, if that relay is not closed and the blower is not on, common to that contactor. You can send 24 volts to it, but if common's not going to it, heat strips won't run. So I'll do a video on how to wire that up for different situations. This one, a Goodman or carrier somewhere where you're going to back feed voltage from the heat relay back to energize the speed tap for the blower. I'll do a video on how to wire those up. But anyway, let's get the breaker back on. And we're going to energize G. And first thing we want to do, make sure that the blower doesn't run. When the unit has power, which it is not. And I want to, because this involves my heat strips. If it's not wired right, I want to be down here, make sure I'm not getting amp draws on, on the heat strips. It's just the way I double check to make sure that I've wired that thing wrong, so, or wired it right, excuse me. So anyway, so let's jump out. Oh, let me get our, oh, and the red wire that came off of that relay. All I did was just snip it, put a fuse in it. I didn't see a fuse in here. There may be one somewhere packed behind those wires or something, but it doesn't hurt to have an extra one. All right, so let's energize, energize. G. Make sure our blower runs. And it does. And there's no amp draw on our heat strips, so I know that those aren't running the same time my blower's running. So we're all good on that. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna close this thing back up. And then we're gonna get the thermostat calling and see if those pressures are good. Now that all this airflow and the nasty coil and the relay or the capacitor has been changed. All right, guys, so we've got her back on. We've got the coil clean. You saw how nasty that was. Got the capacitor replaced. I blew a rope relay fix. I've got it jumped out over there. That thermostat, I think, after it's been off a little while, probably goes back into a reset. you got to go back in there and turn it on. I'll check that before I leave. But you can see now our pressures were earlier, I think, what, they were 50 and something and had zero superheat from like one subcool or something like that. Now we got a 21 superheat. It's been on about five minutes. My subcooling is at about 5.2. So we're running a 71 and a 148 in R22. It's 68 degrees outside. It's 73 degrees in there. It's not a big load on it. I don't think we're going to have to do to add refrigerant so don't just assume a unit's low on charge when you hook up to it oh you need some refrigerant check your airflow make sure your filters are clean make sure your coil is clean make sure you don't have a collapsed or restricted piece of ductwork somewhere because uh, you may you add refrigerant to the system it, it ain't gonna change anything you're just gonna make it worse you might be able to run your pressures up for a few minutes but all you're going to do is gag the system and cause a bigger problem so anyway guys i think she'll be okay maybe she can squeeze one more summer out of this thing but uh you don't always have to add the refrigerator guys sometimes it's another issue be thorough with what you're checking anyway appreciate you watching like subscribe and we'll see you on the next one